Matt Dancho here, and today I'm talking about this new G Walker package. This is R Tip 83, and this is this thing's amazing. So we're going to be actually making this visualization today. We're going to make actually a couple different visualizations, but the key here is it's just like Tableau, but it costs zero dollars. And this thing is amazing. It's interactive. You can actually like click on data. You can hover over it. We can you know, change which data sets are being um, shown. And it's very similar to Tableau if you've, if you've ever used Tableau before or Power BI. Uh, except it, it's brilliant because it, it's free. We get it free in R. So um, let's check this thing out. The, um, the package is GWalker. So if you haven't ever used it before, um, this is what you'll want to run to install it. So install.packages and it's a G, capital G, capital W, uh, walk and then capital R. And um, it's very similar to also the Python package, which is PyGWalker. Um, and it's actually made by the same people. So then you'll load them up. So just hit a control enter, uh, load those up. And then um, what you wanna do, so in our R tips folder, if you join R tips, you get access to all of these. So make sure you join the newsletter, a link in the video comments. But um, the video, the, uh, we're working out of is this 083 G Walker. So we have 83 of these R tips. Uh, I'm going to show you how to read in some data. So we have two different data sets I'm going to be playing around with. The first data set is MPG. Um, that's a cars data set, uh, fuel economy, so miles per gallon. Um, and then we'll also be doing a time series data set, which is Walmart sales. And that's what we, we saw here in the, um, uh, in, in the intro. Okay, so um, first thing I'm going to do to is load in some data. So Control Enter. I'm loading in the uh, MPG data set, so MPG tibble. Um, we can see it's 234 rows by 11 columns. It ha contains manufacturer model. Uh, so for different vehicles, it has uh, different features like a displacement, what year that model was made, how many cylinders, um, the highway fuel economy, and the city fuel economy. So how we will explore that, and this is what's amazing, G Walker is great for data exploration, uh, just like Tableau, um, and what we do is we just run this one line of code. So you see um, the default is the light mode, but you can also do dark mode, and I'll show you how to do that here in the next data set. Um, but this is this is what's cool. So you, you start with the visualization tab and then you can add new charts up here. So we could add new chart, new chart, new chart, and then we can switch back and forth and create different charts. So that's why it's really good for EDA. But starting out, it also has this data tab and the data tab is really powerful because when you first start opening up this data, uh, you might not um, know what types of data you have in here. So we can see quickly manufacturer is a category. Uh, categorical so we can see it's a, a character feature and there's Dodge is 15% Toyota 14% and so on and you can see the, the sample of the different data um, so let's move on so model is a uh, character again so that's going to be categorical um, and you can see uh, some of the different categories in here or some of the different models then we have numeric features like displacement. We've got year, which is actually being um, reported as a category. And we only have two, half of it's 1999, half of it's 2008. Uh, cylinder, um, we can see here, there's only a few different values that you can use and so, and so on. So um, we're gonna actually be exploring the highway fuel economy and let's check that out. So how would we do that? Now that we know a little bit more about our data, um, we can start to drag and drop. So this is beautiful. By default, it's set up for aggregation. If you want to, um, if you want to do aggregated plots, like say, um, if we want to do like average. Uh, so if I do average as the, we'll say highway being the y-axis. Um, so it's going to be sum by default. If we we can change that to mean, and then. We can do by same manufacturer. So X would be a categorical and you can see you've got now the average. Um, and then you, if you wanna like sort them, sort in ascending, sort in descending, very powerful. Um, to expand on this, so the, the trick here is when you start using this, uh, uh, you might want to make it fixed, uh, which is where you can actually like drag it to different sizes. Um, or you might want to make it a container and it just kind of fills out the container. Okay, so uh, that's pretty cool there. 
So say what if you had like different groups here? So for example, we, we have different manufacturer, but you have uh, different types of class. So that might be something you want to check out and you can uh, color it, say by class. Very cool. Now you have the different classes up here. Um, if you want to add filters in, you can do that here and we can say, okay, maybe I only want to look at, uh, you can see how we have the counts. Maybe I, I want to take off like the two seater, the minivan, and just look at, at some of the ones with the larger numbers of counts. So confirm that. And you can see now here, it's all um, set up for you. We can try and kind of reorder it, reorganize it how you want. Another thing is, is sometimes you may want to do what's called faceting. And how you do that is you, if you drag this over here to say the Y axis, so now you have the faceting being done. Again, faceting is just being able to, to basically see by different groups, like SUVs broken out, subcontact, and so, and so on. So very cool, you can kind of play around with that, the dragging and dropping. Again, you can do different charts here. So say once you're done with this chart, say if you wanna do another one that's not aggregated. So let's take off aggregation mode. Uh, and what this does is it allows us to basically put on, compare, instead of aggregating like highway mean before now we can start to see some different plots like this like a scatter plot for example so i'm going to do i'm going to switch this over to container so we fill out and you can see like the relationship between highway fuel economy and city fuel economy and again you can do displacement let's see actually displacement's a, a numeric feature um whoops yeah if you if you move it up here this will be like the different like categorical fields oh this this is cool so if you click on this and you do a calculation. You can do things like log or you can do custom calculations. So I'm gonna do uh, log base 10 and you see how it now adds log 10. So if we remove highway and do log highway, okay. And if we remove city and we can add in now, do a new calculation, uh, log base 10 city. And there you go. So we can do log transformations. Okay, and if we want to do something like maybe again manufacture, so here it's you can see it's kind of like a stacked plot here. Um, what I want to do is I want to convert that to instead of a bar plot. Let's see, that's trans. You can oh you can also transpose it, and then you know that that's kind of that's kind of nice. Okay, so I found it here. Um, so if you have aggregation mode, um, turn turn that off, and then turn on, click on this and this is the mark type. So uh, it does automatic detection. So right now it's kind of doing this stacking, but what we want to do is we want to switch over to box plot. And then uh, what we might want to do is just resize it real quick. So you can do uh, as a container um, and, and so on. Okay, so that's, that's the first one. Uh, let's move on to a time series data set. So like say you're working with a time series. So we're gonna hit control enter and control enter here. Oh, and this is, by the way, dark mode. I like dark mode actually a little bit better. Um, but, but if you uh, check out the data, um, we have a date column in here now, and then we have uh, weekly sales for Walmart. And we have a bunch of other columns in here. Um, whoops, uh, and then here's the ID. So this is the store and department combination, the store and department ID. So there's, looks like there's six or seven different IDs in here. Okay, so, uh, We'll start by taking our weekly sales. That's our, gonna be our Y variable. And then our X variable would be something, would be the date uh, column. So we gotta find that, put that right here. And pretty cool, um, it, it does a good job there. So let me fill this in. So we're gonna do a container. Okay, so what it's doing is it's aggregating, okay? And if you t turn off the aggregation mode, then it looks a little bit crazier. Um, and that's because the, all of those combinations of um, ID and department were being aggregated into like the total sales. So what I wanna do is I wanna take that ID and um, I wanna show you how to facet it. So we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do on the Y axis, I'm gonna add the ID here so I can see all of these time series. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take over here, add to the color so I can see all the different IDs. I'm also gonna add a filter now on ID. And what this will allow me to do is just to uh, compare different time series, but, but that way we don't have all of the time series being shown. So like if I just wanna compare two of these time series, um, you can see here. 
All right, so uh, and if you want to add a, a different time series in, you can just always add that and just click confirm and it'll it'll put it in here, okay? Okay, and then if you want to, um, so when we hover over things, there's a details feature. So if you put, say you want to know like what the store is, now the store comes up when I highlight it. And if you want to know what the fuel price was during that period of time, fuel price was $2.68 uh, and so on. So very powerful. You can always, there's a lot more here. If you want to save any of the images, I think this is cool. You can save it, export it as a PNG. I've actually already saved one of these files that I've previously been working on on a different data set. I've already saved this one here. And you can see here, this is, it just takes that plot and it saves it as a high quality PNG. So lots of stuff to explore here. Uh, hopefully this gives you a good tutorial and a good starting point. As I said, if you want, if you like what you saw here, we have 83 of these. And if you want the code and everything and the data set all in, are all contained in this RTIP 83 folder, you can just add that in and check that out and you will be able to download all of this. In fact, all of these different tutorials that I've done before. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.